Today I'm going to share with you the best things about solo RV living and the absolute worst. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing and these are exciting times to push through fear, build confidence and live amazing. And you definitely need to push through fear and build confidence if you're going to give up most of your possessions and hit the road and live in an RV, especially if you're going to be doing that solo. Today is my one year anniversary of leaving my hometown of Lexington, Kentucky and hitting the road to live full time in my camper. I will share with you the high highs and the low lows of my experiences in order to help you on your journey. A year ago, I gave up my house, husband, even sold my car and moved into a little camper van. I had that for the first five months before upgrading to my fifth wheel camper. And there's definitely been some challenges on the way. So I come up with nine best things about solo travel and four not the best things. Number nine. Number nine is total freedom of your schedule. You can wake up, go to bed, sleep, eat whenever you want. You have absolute total control of your day and it is pretty awesome. You can sleep in as late as you want. Number eight is you get the whole bed to yourself. You get the covers, the pillows, everything. You get it all. <sighs> Number seven. Number seven is you get to listen to whatever music you want and you can dance to it. You don't have to worry about your tasty music not jiving with someone else's. You don't have to worry about how you look while you're dancing. You can just go for it. Number six. When you go to parties and gatherings, you can just leave whenever you want. You don't have to wait until someone else is ready. Number five. Another great thing is it is your place. The entire camper belongs to you so you can fill up the whole closet, all the cabinets, everything is yours. And if I want to, I can hug the entire bathroom counter. Ha ha ha. Number four. You can do housework as often or as little as you want. Oh man, all my bowls are dirty. Oh well. Number three. have control of the remote. Number two. Uh oh. There's only one left. But it's mine. It's mine. It's all mine, mine, mine. One of the best things about solo RV living is that you will always get the last cookie. <laughs> Never be uncomfortable again. You have total control over the thermostat. You can just set it as warm or as cold as you want whenever you want. Oh man, I'm hot from all that dancing. Now we're good. And really, there are some awesome, awesome things about traveling solo. It is so freeing. I can't even begin to describe to you how freeing it is to be on the road by yourself, 
just not knowing what's around the corner and getting to explore at your own pace and just really enjoying life, living life to the fullest. Although it's just been overall amazingly awesome, there definitely have been some low lows. If you're on the road, I absolutely would love some tips and advice on how to deal with the not so great things. So one of the continuing challenges is that it takes me forever to back up in a site. I am constantly getting out of my truck and walking around and looking. Even though I do have a backup camera, I still need to see for myself. I know if I had somebody else there helping me, it would be way faster. But I don't trust just anyone to help me, so I think this is something that I just need to learn to deal with. That, hey, it's just going to take me extra time to back into a site. Another thing is that sometimes there's no one I can ask for help if I've got something really big to move or lift. I'm in pretty good shape and this is a reason to stay in shape. If you're getting ready to hit the road, this is something to think about is that there is definitely some moving and lifting that you'll be doing if you're on the road solo. There's no second set of eyes, so it's up to me to make sure that everything is in place, particularly on travel days when I'm packing up. I use a checklist and I check it twice and make sure it does take me a little bit longer, but it would be nice to just have another set of eyes to say, whoopsie, you forgot something. And the number one not so great thing about RVing solo is that there's no one to share the good times or the bad times. I have been in so many, many beautiful places and there hasn't been anyone to turn to and go, wow, this is just so beautiful. Hello? Anyone? But worse than that, there's nobody there to support me for the low lows. I've learned a lot about myself on this journey in the past year. And you know that saying, no matter where you go, there you are. And I've had to learn to live with myself. And if you go on a solo trip, you'll have to learn the same thing, how to enjoy your own company, how to be your own best friend. For example, when I'm not in that great of a place, Mentally, I've noticed that my default mode is to go to anger or resentment. So I'm not that much fun to be around and I have to learn how to be around myself. So I have made a lot of growth in doing things such as deciding that I'm going to choose happiness. And it's a constant reminder that I have to give to myself to choose happiness. Happiness is a choice. And that's really made a difference. The other thing is, is that isolation is real. Whether you're traveling solo or as a couple or a family, when you're out on the road, you don't have that community that you have with you if you're living in a house. So it's really easy to go into isolation and into depression. So one of the things you'll need to do is take charge of your mental health and mental well-being if you're on the road. If you want to get more connected, join the A-Team. It's this community I'm building where we help, support, and inspire each other. And if you liked this video, you'll love the next one about dealing with the dark side of being alone on the road. I'll see you in the next video.